Hi, my name is Richard Bilderbeek. I would like to develop some code for this little project, Programming Formalisms Medium Project. And this is the idea of the video. So I go in unprepared uh, to show you the way of thinking. I have no idea which kind of errors I'm going to encounter. I didn't practice this. Uh, but we'll be using test driven development to use a function called get digits. So it's a function that if you have a number, let's say 123, that it will return 1, 2, 3 in a list. But not only that, uh, I'm going to push it to, to the GitHub, but I'm also going to fix the style error. So in, in some videos, I don't always do this. In this case, I will also observe the style and uh, fix that as well. Alright, to get started, we're going to open up the project. And it's already an existing project. Uh, and that's nice to have the, the, the skeleton in place. And we're going to call, the, so the function is called get digits. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look, like I like to, to work alphabetically. So I'm going to look for a function called test data, great. And we're going to call it, um, I'm just going to copy it, test get digits. So note already here that there's a linter command there uh, because I don't document what this function does because the function name itself is already enough documentation. It will test the function get digits. So that's why I choose to ignore uh, the, the style guideline here. Uh, but f go ahead and, and, and do it yourself and copy paste those things. Right. My first favorite test is to write a test that assumes that there is documentation. And there's none, of course, because I'm the, well, so I broke the code now. That's great, that's the first phase in test-driven development, breaking the code, I just broke it. And now I need to fix it as with as little effort as possible. But I know at the top I need to write down get digits. Get digits. Um, so in that way now the program can theoretically find it, but still it's not there. So I'm going to put a put a bookmark here just to go oh, here, so that I can go back easily. So there's a I'll remove this bookmark over there. Like there's a there's an extension called bookmarks in uh, Visual Studio. But um, so this file is called test medium, so it makes sense to go to the file called medium to write this function get digits. There's some text here. That, that there's get datas, and here we have get digits. Def get digits. X. It's a function, and let's write the documentation. Get the digits of an integer number. Maybe I like to repeat itself. Get the digits to repeat. For example, one, two, three becomes one and this is a, a Python list so it's like this one oh one two three so it splits up the the, the, the number into its its digits um, um it should does not it only works on integers so we'll raise type error if x is not an integer Right, I think this is a uh, good enough documentation. Do I miss something? So what if the if it's negative? Um, yeah, so also we'll write uh, hmm, what I'm going to do with this negative. Well, let's call it runtime error. I think runtime error. We'll see if x is not. Um, so what we're going to do. I would say, let's make it easy for myself. If it's minus, um, just write, write like this. Negative number have only their digits collected. Collected, for example, becomes minus one, two, three, becomes one, two, three, because those are the digits. Uh, what happens to zero? Um, zero becomes and add zero here and zero becomes took a simple list with only a zero. Like this is obvious for for one, two, and three, 
But let's just write explicitly there is zero. So I think I've held, I've thought deeply enough about the function. It should be clear to you um, what this function is going to do. Save the file. Save the file. Um, and let's go to our tests. So now at the left you can uh, run the tests here. That's super nice of Visual Studio. And I made the test pass. So I could now already push it to GitHub. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to do a couple of tests. And then, um, um, then in the end push it to GitHub and check for the style. So my favorite second function to test is to check for the data type. So that is so because it should be an integer. To do that, you use assert races, um, and then you use error. Oh, it's called type error. Of course, uh, nice English. I like that. So if you call the function get digits with a uh, evil string, evil string. Then it should give the, a type error. So, so this is the syntax. It it's expected to raise a type error when get digits is called with evil string. So I should break the build here. Let's see if I really do that. And yes, I did it. There's no error being raised. So that means we're going to fix the error now. Well, that's easy. If is instance, oh, if not is instance. If x is not an integer, then raise uh, type error x must be an integer. All right, let's see if we now already fixed it. Let's run it again. And it's fixed. Nice. Then we are going to um, write our first test. So um, assert equal, I think, is how to test for things being equal. It, it makes too much sense to me to to so for example get and then um but do we expect well for example zero should return in a list called zero. That's what I would say. Uh, does that work? No, doesn't work yet. So how are we gonna do that? Um we're probably gonna already start with uh, let's close this file. We don't need a small thing. So probably I need to do some for looping, um, something like this. And I'm I'm just thinking out loud here. So um, so with zero, so so um, like it needs to divide by ten a couple of times, and then uh, if it's either if it's a zero to nine, if it's a one digit, return that last digit. Um, I can do that. If x is less than ten then return x. Oh, and it needs to be as a list, so something like this. I'm not sure if this works, if this is proper Python syntax, uh, but let's see, let's see. Yeah, this works. All right, so um, let's do this for one as well, if, the, if that works. Um, if this works, I delete the test, because, well, that's test-driven devel development. All right, next one. Let's do 12, and that should return a one and a two. So this test will fail because we don't uh, we don't allow lower numbers yet. But right, also note the order in which I do things. It, it there are many ways to do this. Um, um, I just pick this one that feels most natural to me. All right, so I'm going to write a while true, which means forever do. And then here we do uh, forever if x less than 10 return x. And here we write x equals x divided with 10. So for example, if we have 11, that's an integer. If we divide it by 10, um, then um, the, the 1 stands out. But let's use 21 as an example. If we divide 21 by 10, um, we only get 2. This is the front number, like because of the integers, they don't, uh, they they can't, they're not rounded off, they're truncated. So I think this is a good way to 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 get this list uh, formed. But already we see a problem here because it only returns one element. So we need some kind of list. Um, let's call it digits. Is something like this. So we have digits. Digits dot append. I think it is x 
So this starts making sense. So we have a list here that is empty. Uh, forever do while x is less between less than 10 digits append x and then return digits because then we're done um, if it's bigger or equal than 10 divided by 10 and try again I think this makes sense let's take a look let's take a look how well I do um, so fields should be fixed it's not um, lists differ 1 dot 2 is equal to 1 comma 2 Alright, did I make a typo? I have no idea who made the typo. Um, apparently I made the... Um, apparently what gets out of it is a list with the value 1.2. So uh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted it to be divided by 10. So what are we going to do? Uh, it is an int. Um, so we're going to call it with trunk work in, in Python, I have no idea. Trunk, um, maybe just use int, something like this, I have no idea. I have no idea. Um, well, that sounds like a uh, Google. How to divide Python, divide. Um, divide without rounding. How can I force division to be floating point? Remove division. Divide numbers without rounding them automatically. That's what I want. Let's take a look what this uh, forum has to say. Uh -huh. Don't divide using integers. That's not what the guy is not asking. It's perfectly reasonable integer division. So Python always creates um, Python always creates a double for this, so we need to uh, need to use something like integer division. Integer division, because that's what I I want it to be. Ah, and there it is. It's a, it's a slash slash. Excellent. So we're going to use that. Um, so use x slash slash ten. Let's see if that if that works. And run it. And still lists differ. One should be one comma two. So that means that the function in line which line so twelve should be one comma two. Problem is twelve returns a list with one element, which is one. So let's take a look where we do what to do wrong then. So we get our x m if it's less than ten digits. Uh, ah. So we should always. Um, so we should always append what x is modulo 10. So if you have 11 it will add the 1, if it's 0 it will append 0, it will append the last digit. If the total number is still less, if less than 10, we're done. Else do an integer division by 0. So let's run this. Alright, so the problem is now we have 2 comma 1 instead of 1 comma 2. Alright, so then the order in which the numbers are added is incorrect. Um, does it make sense? Yes, because first we're adding the last digit to our list, uh, and uh, in the end we s so we we really go backwards. So I think there's a one thing we can do is simply to reverse. I think that I think it's called ref in Python. When we reversed, reversed, and uh, so that will solve ret return the reverse digits in the end. Like we could also prepend it. I'm not sure if there's a Python function that does prepend. Um, I don't care. Uh, as long as my tests pass, I am by definition happy. So let's take a look. So there's another test that fails in line 69, which is this line. So for zero, um, uh, zero does not return the list of zero. Let's take a look. How can that be? So the digits is empty, 
we append 0 um, if x is less than 10 return a reverse digit maybe like I'm not sure what x but what 0 divided by 10 is or what what happens if you reverse a list so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use I feel 0 is a sketchy value like a special value so yeah let's use 1 first um, if it's this if it passes line 69 then I know the 0 was the problem if it fails in line 69 we know that because it was one number that is one number being the problem I'm gonna run it again and let's see it fails in line 69 where uh, yeah so we can't reverse it if it's one item so we're gonna uh, we're gonna do it and then do it simpler at the start we're gonna say well if it's below 10 return X bam as a list um, in any other case uh, we're gonna do the regular thing let's take a look how that works mm -hmm, that doesn't save 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 too much uh, why doesn't it it's because this reverse fails uh, all right so I misinterpreted how this worked I think ah uh, it's an in place modifier let's uh, let's remove all this now I think I know how this works it's like this and then this so what reverse does it in place modifies the digits uh, returns nothing so you need to uh, so that's why you can't return this thing because it returns nothing but digits that's what we want to return so let's see if I'm right I don't know if I'm right so mm hmm so now we have first differing elements so right so I was right we get now a more useful error message and they say first differing element zero all right so maybe two comma one let's let's get rid of this this, this reverse digits and let's see if we can do prepend append so that doesn't work digits dot append well let's take a look python append at the front ah it's a uh, insert well that's that's with an array um, this is a list let's take a look how they do that like it's not maybe very s very quickly but that's good that's good enough for me access insert oh sure I can do that digits insert at position zero that value and let's take a look if all tests pass now everything works um, so this is going great so you've seen all the errors I've made and all the thoughts mistake I've made um, I think there's one mistake still if I do minus 12 um, I predict this will return uh, one element with minus 12 um, so let's run that and let's run that test again to make it to break it yeah it's correct uh, I don't even yeah so it gives an 8 back so what we're gonna do is um, at the start if x is less than 0 we let the function call itself with the negative value of x I think that's a nice way um, one problem is that the type will be checked twice you could argue that but it must be an integer so uh, this, this this test need to this check needs to be done before it makes sense to call this function again so uh, I would agree with that for now and everything works so I predict I can't break it anymore I can try um, let's push it to, to github git status git add git commit add get digits git push oh, git push um, and now all the tests are going to run this program format this is this project I made it a bit big for this video 
so here we have test rim not gonna wait for it like I know if I do rough dot it will do a style check and here we can already see that there are one two three four five spell checks uh, failing or, or style checks so let's start at the bottom because then these line numbers don't change all the time medium line 116 magic value used alright so let's go to medium 116 magic value used so I would say this 10 is not super much of a it, like it's a magic value yes uh, because it's a, a, a 10 numbering system um, but like I could create a variable called 10 and store the value of 10 in it instead I will choose to, choose to ignore it so how do we do that? there NOCA and what is the problem there? Ah, right. so we see on GitHub already that Ruff also found the same error so that's nice that it's exactly the same and I copy the error number there alright let's go to the next one exception must not use a string literal assigned to variable first that's in line 110 uh, let's go to line 110 110 oh yeah I know why this is the case because in this the problem is that if this thing is raised it will show this on screen and it will also show this on screen so it will give this error message twice so the solution is to make a variable let's call it like like message message uh, no need to be store it as a store the message as a message and put it here that will silence that problem uh, avoid specifying long messages that's I'm not sure we've done that I guess first line of doc string should be imperative mode all right all right line 98 imperative mode 198 get the digits Let's take a look what Ruff has to say now. Uh, medium line multi multi-line doc string summary should start at the first line. Multi-line doc string summary. Start at ah yeah, I have to move it here. And do it here, yes. So now my style is clean, git and git commit clean style. Git push. So at now I have tested uh, so I predict this, yeah, this will work if I press F5 we'll see another round let's take a look if I've messed up my code coverage uh, let's take it. so the code coverage is still a hundred percent so that's great so we didn't write any dead code and thanks to the test driven development this is less likely anyways so um, there we go we just created a function called get digits to get the digits of a number I've shown all the mistakes I made, I've shown all the testing, uh, all the thoughts that went wrong and how to solve it, and I solved it in the end. So I hope you enjoyed to see an experienced programmer um, struggle with a more newer language and solves the problems anyways. I wish you a very good day and see you next time. Bye!